Hello and welcome to another Spruce and Bruise unboxing. Today we're looking at Mutant Year Zero, Zone Wars and the Robots and Psionics expansion. So first of all I want to say massive thanks to Free League for sending us these over. Now if you've not seen this before, this is a brand new self-contained skirmish game by um, well, gaming legend Andy Chambers who's been responsible for loads of systems 40k, Battlefleet Gothic amongst others. And yeah, if you skirmish games traditionally nowadays tend to be you know small model counts, but you still kind of collect models and build up your force and kind of it all expands out from that initial set. What's different with Zone Wars is that it's very self-contained. Um, if you pick up both these boxes, you have got all the miniatures and all the rules, so that's really cool. Um, there's four factions two of which are in each box. The main box here in the orange has got the core rules in it and everything you need to get playing. And then the, the blue box essentially allows you to play with extra players and introduces those two new factions and all the cards needed for them. So in this video, what we're gonna do is have a look at both boxes, see what's included, have a look at the game and the models and see how it plays and see if it's worth picking up because um, obviously it's a very, um, crowded space the the skirmish games uh, environment and this is a little bit different in that it's all fully self-contained so what we do is move the robots and psionics box out of the way for now and we'll have a look at the core game itself so i believe both of these boxes are 50 pounds each and like i say this one here has everything you need to get playing with all the core cool rules and everything uh, if we pop it open and have a look at what we get inside Take this lid off here. We get a lot of card tokens. And again, these are all nicely printed. There's space in the box to store all this as well for when it's punched out. You get a three foot by three foot gaming mat as well, which is really nice. If you've not got a kind of a gaming board that you can play on, this is not too big that you can actually probably play with it on a dining room table as well. Again, that's something that a lot of skirmish gamers have been trying to do because not everybody's got a big six foot by four foot board that they can play games on. So by doing something that you can play on a dining room table makes it a lot more accessible. So yeah, it's just a, just a fold up map. It is double sided as well. So you've got a few options on, on how the environment looks too. And that is included in there. Obviously you could you know, replace that with a neoprene mat or something if you wanted, but uh, you know it's not required. We get the few full, uh, zone Wars rules, which we'll have a look at in a little bit. We also get some sheets of card terrain as well. So these all punch out, slot together to make uh, the terrain needed for the scenarios. Um, you could glue this permanently to make it a bit sturdier as well. Obviously you could sub that out for, for plastic or resin buildings if you wanted to, but it's really nice that you get all the, all the buildings in here and they're quite nicely varied as well. It's not like the old 40k wooden scenery, uh, cardboard scenery, sorry, where it's all just, you know, looking the same. You've got a bit of variety in here. Um, the game itself also uses its own kind of um, measuring system. So rather than having to worry about having a tape measure, everything's split into short, medium or long range using this ruler. You do get another one of these sheets in the other box as well. So if you are playing with two players, you've both got one of those available. So that's a nice touch. The rule book does give you kind of sizings for them in inches, but obviously having a bespoke little doofer there to measure out those ranges is, is quite handy really. So put that to one side and we'll have a look what else is in the box. So we take off the sheet, you'll notice that we get some models that are pre-colored. Now these have been pre, not pre-painted, but they've been prepared in such a way that they've got quite a bit of contrast to them. So if we take a look at these, you can see that the details do pop. You can see that lighter color coming out. Now I'm probably gonna end up spraying these and, and painting them myself, but um, they're really nice models. For, for one piece, kind of like pre-molded things, which you know always have a little bit of bending and stuff in them. These have come out really, really nicely. And they've got some really nice detail too, which is not something you always see on these kind of one piece models. You know, there's there's limitations in, in molding for stuff like this. 
So the fact that they um, they do look so nice is really cool. I really like this faction. They're very um, Rocket Raccoon kind of uh, experimental mutated creatures, which is very cool. A fox is ace, and then we've got the big moose guy with the big kind of two-handed hammer thing. He's ace. The other faction in the box are your more traditional kind of like gangers. Again, these are all mutants, of course, so they've got some unusual characteristics. But these are more, I don't know, Mad Max style, I'd say. Dude with a big chainsaw. And I've got to say, the, the way they've kind of prepared the models to uh, to give them a bit of contrast with that colour really makes them stand out on the battlefield. It's worth noting that all four um, factions are in different colours as well, so there's no real requirement to paint them at all. Obviously I like painted models, it looks a lot nicer on the battlefield, but the fact that they are all um, pre-prepared in uh, in different colours means you can use them straight out of the box as well. Uh, you also get two sets of custom dice as well. They have got some different facings on them. So you've got this symbol on the one, and you've got the kind of like nuclear symbol on the six. They basically represent different abilities within the game. And then you get another set of dice as well which you use for kind of like pushing your weapons. And similarly, you've got your like critical hit on the six, then a little explosion on the one, which is used for when you push your weapons and you know, chance your luck, you might accidentally roll them and cause some damage to your own weapons. And then finally in the box, we get a load of cards as well. So there's stack cards for each character. Again, this is two complete factions within the box. In a normal game, you'd use between three and five models each. So, you know, you've got some options here. And then you do get some um, other cards that are used for events that happen in game. We'll see the rule book in a little bit, but essentially it works a little bit like bolt action, where you put into a bag tokens that represent the yeah the two factions and then there's also some other tokens that go in there and um, you then take turns drawing tokens out of a bag and if it's um you know you draw a token for the relevant faction that player gets to go so it could be that the same player gets to activate a few models in a row um adds an element of surprise to there and then there's some kind of neutral ones that trigger some of those cards that we saw you also get a full deck of gear and items that you can pick up along with some of the kind of psionic powers and effects that your your characters get. You tend to start with a fixed loadout of a lot of these and then uh, draw some random ones to add to your hand. So yeah, really, really cool. So we'll put that to one side for now. And we'll have a quick flick through the rule book itself before taking a look at what's in the robots and psionics box. So yeah, this is quite a easy to pick up game. And it's not a particularly heavy and weighty rule book and the mechanics are quite simple to use. You know, again, it stresses that this is a self-contained game and all the tokens and all the dice and all the bits that you need are, are within here, which is pretty fun. So if we flick through, essentially we mentioned earlier that you draw tokens out of a pot and depending on which token that you pull is which player gets to go and there's also a chance of random effects. When you do pull a token you pick one of your characters that's on the battlefield and you can choose to make an action with them. So that can be move and attack, do an aim shot, charge, sprint, they can use one of their mutations that they've got, they can recover, they can help somebody recover or they can do simple or complex operations. Once you've done one of them, you put your token next to them. That shows they're activated, and then you get to draw another token from the pot to see who goes next. Something that does exist in here in, as well is Overwatch. So um, basically that means that you can give up your, your activation now in order to shoot during your opponent's turn. So maybe you've got someone quite well placed to take a shot at someone as they run past. You can put an Overwatch token on there to tee up that rule and... Um, kind of keep your opponent guessing and potentially deter them from going there. And that's essentially how the game works. It's it's very, um, there's elements of kind of necromunder in there, but not as complex. And damage, basically, if you look at one of the character sheets, 
um, you see everyone's got a health characteristic. You can take damage up to that and then you are, um, you're basically kind of broken, which means you need to recover. If you do so, you flip your card over and you're on your blooded side, which is basically like your, your kind of the last half of your life meter. Once you're dead then from that side, you're removed from the game. So a bit like Marvel, Marvel Crisis Protocol where you've got, kind of got this halfway state. Uh, you, you lie down on the ground like in Necromunda and somebody could do a coup de grace on you by, by doing kind of enough damage to you again. Or if you're lucky and you pass that check, you stand back up again, but you're on your much reduced profile. So yeah, interesting mechanic. I quite like how that works. It also means that players are less likely to be taken down in one single volley of fire because they're going to go down into this broken state first. So I think that's quite a clever mechanic. Other than that, a lot of the other things are self-explanatory. Moving uses that, that custom range ruler that they've got. Running means that you move further. You can charge into combat and attack. You can do aim shots to get additional dice. Um, the way combat works, basically you've got a melee stat and a range stat on your card. And then the gear that you've got gives you additional dice to that as well. So you may, for example, have a melee stat of three, which means you get three dice. And then your gear gives you an additional three dice and you use the combined dice together. And basically you're looking for those nuclear symbols in order to uh, to score hits. Um, your opponent then gets to roll a number of dice equal to their armor value and they get additional ones for being in cover as well. And again, they're looking for those nuclear symbols and each one that they make negates a point of damage. Any excess damage goes on the model. And again, like we saw earlier, if it's enough, we could make them broken and knock them out on the battlefield. So yeah, quite a simple mechanic and it's gonna be quite easy to pick up as well. There's also a bit of a gambling mechanic in there as well, where if you do shoot somebody and you've not had a great dice roll, you can push your luck and roll them again. But every one of the little explosion to uh, symbols that you roll causes damage to your weapon. And once enough of that's been accrued, your weapon's useless. So it's known when to kind of gamble and push for those better hits on your weapons or uh, kind of take your chances and, and keep it safe. So yeah, really, really easy. Now there are like, um, mutations that you have each faction has their own kind of variation of mutation but they all do essentially the same thing and these are powers that can be activated using another resource that you generate during the game so the other little symbol that we saw on the yellow dice uh, this one here generates these um, kind of endpoints and then you spend endpoints to use these various psychic powers. And again, there's gonna be ones that enhance your abilities, ones that like, make you do an action like move or shoot. It's all very, very intuitive. Um, similar to how Moonstone works as well, at the start of most scenarios, you, you take some artifact tokens and you drop them on the battlefield and where they land is an artifact that players can pick up. So essentially you move up to it, you pick it up, you get to draw a card and that card will have Sometimes just um, points, you know, victory points for you to take it off the battlefield and score. Sometimes there'll be better weapons and armor and stuff that you can use immediately as well. So that's quite fun. And again, not too difficult to learn. Now the book does include um, rules for creating your own custom characters too. So while all the models in these two boxes is the entirety of the range that's going to come out for this game, you can if you want to, maybe you've got models that you like from a different range or you've 3D printed a model that you like. There, there's rules here that let you create a balanced character to use in the game. So that's a nice touch. You could create your own custom faction perhaps. Uh, if you have played the, um, the Mutant Year Zero role playing game as well, there's also rules here of converting your character into this too. So for the people who like to do that kind of thing, that's really fun. Uh, you do get a number of scenarios in the game and scenarios are multiplayer as well. So obviously if you pick up the robots and Psyonix box as well, um, you can play up to four players, which is really cool. And yeah, there's a load of different missions on here. They all use the same um, kind of three by three battlefield and they all kind of can be played with a number of um, different models as well. You don't have to use all five models from each faction if you don't want to. 
Uh, interestingly as well, and this is something that we've seen quite a lot in recent games, there are solo play rules as well. So if you want to play the game by yourself, there are rules here that basically give the enemy models an AI system where there's kind of a logic path where if it's a ranged character, they'll try and stay in cover and shoot things from a distance where melee characters will try and close a distance to the nearest enemy. So that's really fun as well. I like to see stuff where it lets players play the game even if they haven't maybe got an opponent. So really, really good fun. So that is the base box. There is also the robots and psionics box as well. So this, you, you still need that core orange box in order to play this. This box basically expands your options. It gives you new uh, scenarios. It gives you new terrain. And critically, it gives you two new factions in there as well with the robots and psionics. So if we pop this box open too, we'll see straight away it's a similar setup to the other box. You get a load of sheets of card with all your tokens that you need for your factions and a load more um, scenery as well. So between the two boxes, you're gonna have quite a lot of nice looking card terrain, um, which is cool. We've got a shot of it here. And again, that combined with the stuff in the core box gives you a nice little environment. You could use this for like Necromunda and games like that too. So that's really cool. Again, we'll have a look at the rule book for this in a little bit. In fact, let's have a look at it now. This covers some new scenarios and really kind of focuses on multiplayer as well. So obviously with this box, you can have up to four players in your games, which is a nice little touch. So yeah, less, there's, there's no kind of core rules in here. So bear that in mind, if you do like the robots or the, the psychic kind of faction, you are still gonna need that core box in order to, uh, to know what's happening here. But um, yeah, they are really cool. Now combined with that core box, obviously this expands the factions by another two. And I really, really like these models. So we've got in blue, the robots who look suitably sci-fi. And I'm um, very much looking forward to painting these up with some kind of maybe retro color schemes and some weathering and the like. I think these guys look very, very cool. I think these are gonna be fun to paint up as well. Obviously you don't have to worry about building these as well, which is something that's sometimes intimidating to new players. Yeah. I like this guy with the, with the tracks and the little hat on. Really, really nice models. So yes, they're the robots. And then we've got the uh, psionics faction. Again, these are a bit more, uh, I think they're a bit more necromundry for me. Kind of uh, lots of psychic powers and high-tech weapons, which is very cool. And again, just like the other ones are really nice, uh, really nice models. And just like the other ones as well, they've been colored in such a way that the detail pops, even if they're unpainted. And with each four of the factions being in a different color, it's gonna make it really easy to, um, to kind of see whose models are whose on the battlefield. But yeah, I think, I think they do deserve to be painted up because they look, they look really nice. What I'd probably do is make sure you give each faction a unifying color because then it's gonna tie them together. With this being a skirmish game, you're not gonna necessarily have clear lines of who's on whose side. Uh, worth noting as well, you do get more dice in this set as well, which is really handy. And again, you get all the cards for the various characters, all the various events that can happen during the game, and then all of your uh, weapons and psychic powers and abilities like that. So yeah, that is a unboxing and look at um, Zone Wars, the new uh, skirmish game. Interesting concept having it as a self-contained game. I, um, I know a lot of people that may be used to board games and the like get a little bit intimidated by miniatures games. And I think this would be a really nice entry game for, for getting people into this type of gaming. 
Um, over on the website, after I've had a couple of games of it, we're going to have a full kind of write-up of our thoughts on how the game plays. From first impression to look at the rules though, this looks like it's going to be good fun. should be quick to play and I think it's going to be a nice one for new players to pick up too. There's no kind of complicated crunchy rules to remember and a lot of the information that you need is, is just on the cards in front of you. So again, that's a massive plus for um, people who are new to miniatures games. So yeah, if you um, would like to support the site, we have an affiliate link to Element Games. If you use that to get anything, we get a bit of a kickback, which helps going towards running the site. Uh, if you have enjoyed this video too, why not give this uh, video a like and give us a follow. We do lots of unboxing and videos. Uh, we've got lots of content coming on the horizon for the new edition of Age of Sigmar 2, so make sure you check that out. And very soon on the website, we'll have a full write-up of our thoughts after playing some games too, so make sure to check that out too. But until next time, have a great weekend, and we'll see you soon.